Well, hello and welcome to the Wine and Wisdom Show. If you are here for the very first time, thank you for putting aside your Wednesday night. It's great to have you here and cheers to you. I've got a buttery Chardonnay in my glass. <laughs> what about you? I would love to know uh, what's in your glass. But for those of you who are rejoining, and I know I get so many wonderful familiar faces every uh, time we have the show on, Hello, thank you so much for coming back. Now, one would think that this show is all about wine and, you know, my opportunity to perhaps tax deduct it so I can have this show <laughs> and some wisdom. Um, but in fact, what if you unpack it a little bit more, the show is actually about connection. And I believe that if there is one thing that we have learned over the last 12 months more than ever, is that we want to be connected with people who put a smile on our face, some warmth to our hearts, and some wisdom to our brains. And I think what we can be assured tonight from my incredible storytelling guest is that is exactly what you're going to get. Hello, Julie from Melbourne. Lovely to see you here. But before we actually get started and I introduce you um, to my guest, I would really love, first of all, to pay my respects to the traditional owners and elders spread across the many lands that we are all lo located on today, wherever we are. Uh, I pay my respects to all these traditional owners who have nurtured and protected this wonderful country that we all get to work live and play in. So before I go on and introduce uh, Gail to you, uh, when we talk about this wine and wisdom show, I, like, I feel so lucky because I have been surrounded by some amazing humans in my life. And apart from wanting to just have this connection with you who are here each time, I really wanted to share the wisdom that they can bring to our world because I believe it is these resilient and courageous leaders who are either in the limelight or not, who are sprinkling goodness across our world. And tonight's guest is no exception. I'm going to bring her up right away. Hello, Gail. Welcome to the Wine and Wisdom Show. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's and, so uh, lovely to have you here. Can anybody I, um, I, I would love to know what, what's in your glass, Gail. Have you got something special in your glass? I have a um, gin and tonic, um, a, a, a lovely, a lovely uh, Bombay, uh, Bombay sapphire. Yum, yum. With some tonic and a slice of lemon and some well, cheers, ice. Cheers to cheers. you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to a great show together. Now, Gail, I, I know I know all about your story, um, but what I'd love for you to do is to introduce yourself and uh, tell everybody who's listening, either now or who will be watching it later on, all the goodness that you are sprinkling around <laughs> our country. I, well, actually around the globe. I know you're doing it internationally. So tell us all about that. Well, I, I only sort of kind of became aware that, that uh, a lot of the things I was doing were going going out into the big wide world that it actually was international um i'm still not sort of really you know okay with all this technology and you just think you're having a, a chat on the computer to somebody and the next thing you know you're getting you, you know like you're getting emails or comments or things from people from the other side of the world but um uh oh gosh i, I don't think i even really think about but I'm uh, sprinkling goodness, really. I, I just, uh, one of the things that I really like to do is I just like to encourage people, you know, to to be be decent to each other. You know, it, it uh, one of the things I was talking to somebody recently who'd lived for quite a while um, in America and we, were, and we were talking about the difference um, between American people and, and Australian people and how... We find it really difficult to um, celebrate the success of others. Um, yeah. it, 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 it's like you're allowed to only go so far, but once you, you get above that, there sort of seems to be like all these these people sort of trying to drag you down. And, and um, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly resilient. I mean, you know, I grew up in the bush. Um, I grew up out in a place called Ivanhoe. I'm a, I'm a country girl. 
it's pretty hard to drag us down. Um, but you know, there's a lot of really fragile people out there. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I just would really like, I, I, one of the things I really like to do and what I really believe in is, is to encourage people to do the, to do the best they can, but and but also to not you know to not battle through sadness or you know to 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 give into it sometimes and 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 let it wash over you and 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 pretty soon you realise that you're bored with that and you know I know I I did in the past but you're bored with that and 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 you pull yourself up by yeah. the boots or you know the the ends of your leggings or whatever it is and 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 find things to do that you really love and I think. That's one of the things that COVID, those lockdowns have done, and it's, it's, it's enabled people to reconnect with their family, with their friends, with their dogs, with their cats. Yeah, you know, you know, people are actually cooking again. You know, like they're yeah. cooking and eating together, and and being mindful of each other and appreciating appreciating each other which was a, a way that a lot of us grew up you know like um mm, people mm. of my generation you know we, we grew up eating together every night cooking yeah. you know cooking food together and yeah. and slowing down you know like just slowing down and realizing that it's you know like wasting time is not actually wasting time no you know that, that's how we get movies and books and all the beautiful things in life it's just by you know, just freeing your mind and allowing yourself to, allowing your mind to wander, and and yeah. it's amazing how creative you can be if you just give yourself a chance to slow down. And I think it's been a, a wonderful opportunity for for so many people. You know, oh, I couldn't agree more. And I think especially that whole point you just made in regards to, I mean, people. I think people struggle with boredom now. That people think boredom is such a terrible thing, but in fact, it does. You know, it's it's probably the the word's wrong. It, when we don't have something to do, people immediately think they're bored, right? And uh, that's not, not the, the opportunity for just the mind to wander and to have the space and to relax yeah. and and re, and like all those creative things that come when we create a space for that, which means that we're not scrolling, we're not doing, doing, doing. We're just being. And yeah. I think you're exactly right with just being you know let's just slow down so we can be the creative and, and like you're a great example gal i mean how many books have you written um oh gosh um 14 oh my and um i'm in oh lots of different anthologies there's three coming out this year wow one's a poetry book with uh, published by magabala yeah. The other one is Growing Up Disabled in Australia. It's published by Black Ink. And there's another one, and I'm sorry, it's just, uh, it's completely gone out of my mind, but it's a, it's an, an anthology of um, uh, Indigenous writers uh, that have been published by University of Queensland Press. So that's coming wow. out this year. Um, I think it's probably going to be released around that so yeah, I there's, some, um, there's some good love going on in the chat box from Tara and Julie. Um, your gorgeous cousin, you inspire me to want to be a writer. Yeah, she. I think she inspires all of us, Julie, definitely. 14 books, oh, my gosh, by herself. <laughs> Gail, I mean, seriously, well, I mean, when you think, I mean, I mean, I know the book uh, right now, um, Growing Up Disabled in Australia. I'd love, I'd love just to talk a little bit about that book, about mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, unfolding like what happened to you as you were growing up I um, mean you know what what how, how did it all work out that you were going to be in this book growing up in disabled in Australia how has that affected your life and you know what what is it meaning right now for you well right now it's meaning lots and lots of work yeah <laughs> yeah you know, lots of various um uh, promotional things because um I'm one of the people in Sydney um the, the editor, the, the the beautiful, beautiful Carly Finlay, she lives in Melbourne, so um, she she's doing a lot of the legwork down there with a lot of the Melbourne authors. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I basically, um, there was a call out um, because Heidi, I mean, Heidi, I mean, Carly had this idea of, um, because there were other um, growing up 
in Australia, you know, like it was growing up Aboriginal in Australia, growing up uh, African in Australia, you know, various, yeah. yes. various in, in the series. And Carly had the idea of um, of doing one growing up disabled in Australia, and there was a call out. Um, to to send in stories, so I just thought, well, you know, I'll send one in. Yeah. And uh, I think she got something like about three hundred and seventy entries. So it just goes to show that there's so many people out there just dying to get their stories in there. And um, but unfortunately, she could only um, choose. I think maybe forty six of us got in. Okay. But yeah, each and every one of them are just you know. I mean, I yeah. I haven't read it most of it yet because I'm in the middle of writing and I find I can't read when I'm writing. Yeah, right, yes. Yeah. yeah. I just get distracted. But um, there's some fabulous people in there and I think it gives a real insight, uh, a real insight into, into what it's actually like to have a disability in this country. You know, it's not made really easily in terms of access and equity. And also, pe you know, like people are really honest in this book. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, that there's a motto in the uh, in the in the, the disabled community, the disabled and deaf community. It's, um, um, you know, nothing with us without us because, yeah. um, you know, we, we're all really tired of other people telling us stories and, you know, actors portraying us and wandering off, um, you know, wandering off with their, their Golden Globes and their Oscars and, you know, here are these perfectly great um, actors and singers and musicians and artists out there with a disability, perfectly capable of portraying Quite ourselves. Well. Screen, of course. And perfectly capable of telling our stories. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, of course. That used to infuriate me, you know. Why, why oh are my they... God. You know, like I, I've just, I've likened it basically. It's it's like the, it's like, it's like a form of blackface for a lot yeah. of us. You know, they're, they're, you know, you're not allowed, you, you know, no matter what you do, no matter how much research you do, you'll never know what it's like to be inside our skin, you know, and I think if they start giving people the opportunity to yeah. be in the films and writing roles for us, then there'll, there'll be another, there'll be an altogether other level brought, you know, brought to the screen or brought to the book or the Absolutely. television. Absolutely. I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine what that is like to know that all these capable people, <laughs> I mean, people faking the role, really. They're faking the role, right? And yeah. when there's all these capable people who can, they've lived and breathed the role for their entire lives, right? So yeah. um, you, you, you have polio, is that correct? Yes, that's right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you got polio when you were what age? Two. Wow. Two. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I so I mean that's just w one of the layers of prejudice and and racism even that you you have to deal with d daily. And I mean, I, I you know, I, which brings me to this next part of the segment, which is all about the fact that I had the amazing opportunity to be in one of your audiences when you were speaking on stage, mm -hmm. and you have this brilliant way of turning prejudice and racism into humour because I suppose that's all you can do. Otherwise, you're just going to call it, crawl in a ball and start sobbing, I suppose. I don't know. But you, <laughs> you have an amazing way. And I, I, I hope you are willing right now to share the story that I heard you share, which is based on prejudice, prejudice and racism, but yet so bloody yeah, funny. But, but the person who was, you know, doing this was completely unaware. Completely um, unaware. So start from the beginning. You're in the pub, right? You're in the pub in an area that we both live in, which is on the Balmain, in the Balmain area. Yeah, I, I live in That's Balmain. Awesome. And it's, a, it's a beautiful suburb. It's, it's a beautiful suburb. You know, and, and um, I'd, I'd had a really busy day and so I'd, I'd gone down to the, the local pub to have a couple of um, G and Ts, and and you know, and with a couple of my um, male friends who, and I was just sort of sitting there chilling um, while they they um, they solved the problems of the world um, underneath the tree of knowledge just up the road. <laughs> <laughs> and can, I, can, I, can I just say, 
Can I just say, because, you know, having mutual friends in our area, I, I think it's really important to let them know. Um, it's a big call out to Michelle right now. You're talking about the William Wallace. You work the William Wallace, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And my, and I, so they, they'd all gone out and, and there was no one else in the pub except me and, and um, Jessie um, who works behind the bar and uh, and she was just, you know, cleaning glasses and I'm sitting there, you know, chilling out when, you know, when suddenly the door just bursts open, you know, and there's a waft of Lululemon and, and, and <laughs> Tree of Life and God, every, you know, comes bursting in and, and sort of, practically throws herself on the bar and says, I would like a very, very chilled, very, very dry white wine. Uh, thank you. I've had the most ghastly day. And Jessie, Jessie gets out a bottle of, um, you know, that's already been half drunk of, I don't know, Eau de Mer from, um, you know, Ulladulla or somewhere and pours it to her and, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, she, she, she gets it down, you know, she gets it ha the glass halfway down itself and then and she's looking around because she has no audience, you know, and, and then she, and I'm going, oh, please don't look at me, please don't yeah. look at me because I had my, you know, I, I had my um, wheelchair right down low because it, it, it raised and, and she looked at me and she saw me and I thought, oh, my God, you know. So she comes over and she goes, you know, oh, hello, how are you? And I'm going, oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I'm fine, thank you, you know. Um, and uh, she says, so how did you get here? And I went, well, I, I came here in my in my wheelchair and, oh, isn't that amazing, you know, and, and I sort of muttering, you know, like it's, it's just a few blocks up you know, down from Darling Street, <laughs> part of the March of Sandakan. But anyway, she's, she's, she's there and she's prattling onto me and then she, she says, um, and I'm sort of, you know, I can sort of feel a steam coming out of my ears, ears are really cliche under the sun, you know, is pouring out of this mouth. And, um, and finally she says, um, can I get you anything? Can I do anything for you? Can I get you a drink? You know, and uh, you know, and I, I very rarely knock back a free drink. I can tell you, but I did. <laughs> and then she said, um, "Could I take you to the toilet?" And I went, "No, no, I'll, I can get myself <laughs> quite fine, thank you very much." And then she says, "Is there anything I can do for you?" Oh, and I went, "Well, yes, yes, there is something you could do for me." And she, she you know, like she was beaming, you know. And she said, well, what is it? Anything, anything. And I said, what I would really like you to do is I would really like you to just fuck off. <laughs> and <laughs> she said, I beg your pardon. And I said, I would really like you to just fuck off. <laughs> and she went, oh. <laughs> and, she, and, she, and she bursts, starts you know, running out the door just as my two friends come, you know, come. <laughs> and, she's, and she says, I would like you all to know, as she, you know, as she says, you know, to my friends who are well aware of this fact, that disabled people can be arseholes too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 oh, and my God. And they're just going, oh, for God's sake, what have you done this time? <laughs> That's right. We just went out for a smoke and now what's happened? <laughs> <laughs> then I could oh cause, you know, people could cause such a ruckus, you know. But uh. <laughs> oh. You must, I mean, how, how, how was like the bar, did the bar lady hear it all? Oh, yes, but, you know, like she was, she was going, thank God, you got rid of her. <laughs> you got her out, yeah. You oh, know, she had been in her ear before she spied me, so. But it was just, you know, like, you know, you come in to, to quieten down and, you know, like there was her opportunity to just chill, you know, but she yeah, yeah. had to be on show. You know? She had to be on show. And, yeah. and, oh, like, and again, exactly what you said before you told that story, having mm. no comprehension, mm. like, what her words were actually implying and saying and impacting. I mean, thankfully for you, you can just say, oh, fuck off. Like, really, yeah. get out because you are a whatever um but 
I mean, seriously, I, I yeah. God, I mean, good on you. Well, you know, like we, we cop it all the time. There's a, yeah. there's a sort of, you know, weird notion that, that, that we sit around longing to be able-bodied, but, you know, most of us are perfectly happy in the skin we're in, you know. We're not, yeah, yeah. You know we don't look longingly at the lives of others, you know. We're, this is what this is what we've got, you know. This this is our life, you know, and yeah. and and you know, you know whether whether we're achieving lots or achieving bugger all, what does it matter, you know? As, as no. long as we're happy, you know, and absolutely, and people need to stop patronising us, and you know, there needs to be proper access, you know. People should be able to go in to any building they want, you know. I yeah. mean, I you know, like I've lost count of the number of times I've rung up a pub and said, oh. Can I get into this pub? To, you know, because I like to go out and see music. Yeah. And I'm going, no, no, there's no access. And I'm going, why not? You know, well, it's a heritage building. And I'm going, well, mm. you know, I've been to Europe on several occasions. I've managed to move, you know, ancient yeah. buildings, you know, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years older than, than your motley old bloody pub. They've managed yeah. to make that exactly. accessible. And you're telling me you can't put a ramp somewhere. Yeah, but I know. That's it. It's it's ridiculous. crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And, and I mean, that, I mean, that's been the interesting thing for you, right, in COVID, that this whole access thing has changed completely for you, right? Tell, yes. tell us about what we had this whole conversation at the end of last year. And I'd love you to share that because it's something that I would never have considered. But for you, it's been a big change for you, hasn't it? It has. You know, for years and years, a lot of us have been been wanting to be able to work from home for a start. I think had I been able to really access that way back then properly, you know, with all the yeah. support in place, then I would have been able to stay in, in my job um, a lot longer. But thankfully, maybe it's good that it, that it didn't. But, um, you know, like um, working from home, like all this, you know, like, and 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 being able to present at festivals uh, around um, around the country and around the world, you know, we were going. Well, why can't you film us? You know, why can't yeah. you know? Why can't you? Um, you know, if you can't afford to get us there, why can't we do something? We're, we're, there's technology there, surely. And there yeah. was always excuses. And then yeah. suddenly, you know, COVID comes along. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking like it, it was about three weeks. Because all the the able-bodied people needed this technology. Within three weeks, everyone's working from home. All the festivals and plays and shows that that people, um, you know, with disabilities couldn't attend, suddenly yeah. they're, they're online for, for, for people to see and participate in because it was what able-bodied people and, you know, while we were, you know, with our noses pressed up against, you know, the window always looking in, you know, um, suddenly we were in there. And, yeah. you know, you can't push us back out again now, you know. And, 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 and because, I mean, because we were able to um, be seen and heard, you know, um, at these, you know, like I, I did a number of keynotes last year that I was able to film, you know, and, and then they would show them or they would just video me live. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and people were getting to to know a lot a lot of people such as myself, um, you know, people that, that you would never get to hear, never get to see because, like, um, you know, like, you know, we're ghettoised, you know, and um, suddenly there we were and we were, you know, loud and proud and, yeah, and and um and 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 sick of um being left out, you know, sick of being an afterthought, you yeah. know, like get in, get into the corner and just be quiet and and don't remind us of just how fragile our bodies can be, you know, just just yeah. just get over there, and um yeah, so it, it was amazing, and uh, another good thing about it too, of course, was um with with um with us having to actually um do things online is that the money that would have gone um, in flights and accommodation and for DMs, they could, um, you know, like put some of that aside for, you know, the next conference, but also to sort of up the ante with the um, artists' fees, which, yeah, was, great. which was really helpful during COVID, you know. So, you know, like I'd gone from despair because I, 
I, I, I, got, I was going to be at the um, Sydney Writers' Festival with these amazing writers and that was, you know, and I was so excited. And then that all sort of fell apart and I thought, well, there it goes, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm, I'm going to be down at the front of um, Woolworths with my ukulele, you know, trying to... <laughs> Okay, I'm down for you. <laughs> and, you know, like I can play the ukulele with, without, a, you know, with a mask on. And uh, but but suddenly it sort of all sort of burned, you know. Like yeah. I did one show for little lunch, and and then you know, next thing I know, you know, like I'm I'm just you know, job after job after job was coming. So oh, and, you know, and you you deserve it. You really do. And you know, Gail, when I think about, I think a stat I read today is that. 18% of Australians identify with having a disability. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're talking about 4 million people in Australia mm -hmm. identifying that way, um, so whether they're access, you know, whether depending on what that disability is, but I mean, that's a lot of people who all of a sudden can have an equal amount of access like mm. everybody else. And yeah, again, talking again, about again, I just re to kind of reiterate what you said, how bloody ridiculous <laughs> that it's taken COVID to allow for that access mm -hmm. to happen just because for us able-bodied people who get to have it all really at yeah. any time um, that yeah. we have been impeded by COVID that all of a sudden things can happen for everybody. I mean, I... You know, geez, kind of an I mean, equity, you know, equity, a good old fashioned equity. And you know, like there, there should be hearing loops, there, there should be surtitles, there, there should be braille programs. Yeah. You know, there, you know, it, it, people should be describing what they're wearing, which I don't dare describe what I'm wearing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thank God it's only from the neck up, but um, yeah. uh, <laughs> as long as but, we're not moving uh, yeah. from the neck down, Gail, that's all I'm hoping for. Just in case the camera changes, it's a zoom in and zoom out kind of position. I will zoom in and zoom out on um, on some um, olive oil stains for a start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and Tara's saying one in five Australians. Absolutely. One in five Australians identify to have a disability. Like that's a lot of people who for how many years have not had access um, yes. but within the last 12 months. So, yeah. So, yeah, we can get shitty about it, but let's let's actually celebrate it. Great. We've now sorted it. So yes. we have a lot more people allowing for it. Um, yes. it's, I'm not trying to dampen it down because it's a bloody shame that it has not been able to happen before now. But thankfully, uh, the way that world has adapted for so many things, uh, that is one of the great silver linings, as they talk about, that has come out of it. And, and yeah, and, and, and we can't, you know, they can't just stop it now, you know. No, it's got to definitely not. Well. And it has to improve, you know. Like, I don't want to, and I don't want any of my friends to ring up and find out that we can't go and see a show or go to a restaurant yeah. because there's yeah. no access. Because there's yeah. no excuse. There's no, no excuse. Not now. We know that. <laughs> we know now that that it's possible. I mean, we we all always knew it was possible. But yeah. you know, it all fell on deaf ears. You know, but people, you know, like it, it's a one in five. You know, like that. There's a hell of a lot of people out there. There's a hell of a lot of money to be made out of us. You know, well, you know, a lot of us have 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 you know fairly decent spending power too. You know, yes. I mean, yeah. start catering to us. You know, start you know, like if if there's an ounce of greed in any of you out there, we'll start. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> looking at us. It's like as find as a way. God damn. <laughs> yeah. Now, Gail, uh, I've got two. I've got two last questions for you. The first one is, when you are feeling wobbly, and you know you talked, you talked about being a bit wobbly last year at times. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is it that you know is your fallback thing that you do for yourself to ensure that you kind of really building that resilience muscle or the self care? I mean, what is it that you do? That you can share with all of us that works for you. It might not work for us, but we, you know, that it works for you to make you feel better. Well, one of the things I've really had to learn is to say no and to let people, you know, like 
if an invitation is extended, I may be I may be fine when I've accepted the invitation. But post polio yeah. syndrome, one of the major things about it is is um, intense fatigue, and sometimes you just you know like going out is just not possible. So I've yeah. learned to actually say no, and 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 to stay in bed, you know, and and mm. flick through Facebook or you know yeah. daydream or you know a, a be quiet and. And you know, have a nice thermos of tea in my room with, um, you know, maybe some chocolate cake or something, you know. But mm-hmm. to be quiet yeah. and and yeah. and rest and and not and not feel like I have to be somewhere. I, I mean, yeah. I I think one of the the things that um, I think maybe COVID taught people, um, and and which is something that I had to learn was to to rid yourself of the you know the fear of missing out. Yeah. Because you're not missing out. If you you know, like I, I just thought I, I came, you know, I, I came to the conclusion that I'm not missing out because if I go, I'm not going to enjoy it. No. You know, no, no amount of um, you know, false humor and bravado or or top shelf gin's gonna change that. So <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. just just learning to say no has been a really, really good thing for me. And and I and I find if I'm just quiet for a while and I rest and sleep a lot, sleep is really yeah. important. That that um, you know, but by the time I've I've done the things that I need in order to feel better, um, then I do feel better. You know, like I yeah. feel like I can give give back. Yeah. You know, and and do the work that I do. Um, yeah. So yet, I think you know people just need to be a little kinder to, to themselves, you know, allow themselves to, you know, f- fall into a heap if that's what they need to. You know, it's, it's yeah. you know the you know the, the the best foot forward, the 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 smart you know turn your smile to the camera or whatever you know that's not always the best thing. No. And also, if people offer to help, I mean, you know, like one of my pet hates is when. When people reach out, you know, like particularly people who are suffering with um, cancer, um, when they reach out and people go, oh, you got this or, you know, yeah. stand strong and, you know, oh. you're a strong person. Yeah. You know, it's not up to them or us to stay strong or get this. It's up to you to be strong for them. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, when I was growing up, the thing is if someone was sick, women would go around or men, you know, would go around, people would go around with, with food, they'd take the kids for the night, they'd, they'd clean up the house while yeah. the, the person was having, you know, having treatment. The person would come home, they'd be able to get, to get into clean sheets and, you know, a quiet house. And, and the partners need to be taken care of too, you know, like. Of the partners of people that are ill are often forgotten. They are. You know, so maybe take them out and, you know, give them a night out and let the person just be still and, you know, like these are the things that people used to do and it's not helping people by, you know, writing something on um, Facebook about staying strong, you know. You can be strong for them. Yeah. Without doubt. And I'd love to hear from those of who are watching right now, what is it that you do for yourself when you are feeling a bit wobbly? <laughs> uh, share it with all of us because I'm sure we can all learn from each other about what can work. And sometimes, uh, you know, we, we, we get into our habits of what is good for us, but sometimes just by hearing somebody else's story and I sure go that, you know, part of everything that you do is sharing stories and, and, and being open and honest about those wobbly times uh, allows other people to say, actually, I'm a bit wobbly right now too. And so rather than <laughs> bottling it up and th- thinking I'm all alone and, and no one, no one's experiencing what I'm experiencing, instead if we share our stories so we can take away the stigma of the yeah. fact that we don't all have to be sparkly the whole time, then it's mm. all okay. So let's hear what what of what are what are you doing at home to get you through tough times? We we'd love to hear that when we go. 
Yes, I would. Yeah, and 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 also, um, I'd, I'd like to know some of the little things that you do for your friends that are. You know, yeah. sometimes it's, it, it's, it just means being a, a sounding board, someone on the end of the phone that's not going to say things like, "Oh, yes, I know, I totally empathise with that." Because we can't. You know, we can't. <laughs> no, that's right. You know, and. Um, just listen, be a sounding board, and if they want to yeah. yell and scream and, and say, why me? Well, you know, let them go, you know, let, let, let them have their have yeah. their time. Just let yeah. them in. Because it's just know, a rhythm that we go through, isn't it? Sometimes it's yeah. good and sometimes it's not. Uh, and Tara said yeah. she listens to her favourite music and gardens. Uh, mm -hmm. Julie's saying favourite music and resting. Uh, music is a happy place. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, music for a lot of people... Uh, can really help. Uh, Tara's saying Facebook is often only about being sparky. You are so right, Tara. Everyone's showing their show reels, right? How perfect their life is, and not no one's <laughs> seeing what's really going on behind the scene. Uh, Donna yeah. uh, Donna says a little like I like to give myself permission to feel a certain way instead of trying to just put on a face or smiling. Mm -hmm. Women always get told to smile. Yes, they do, <laughs> Donna. Yeah, we just like hey, come on. Pep, pep, pep up, pep up, we'll be fine. But no, we don't have to be fine all the time and it doesn't make us bad humans for not being fine all the time. That's right. It, it's exactly right. You know, like just just give yourself permission to, you know, feel fucked if you like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, Lynette saying just listen, get out in nature. Yeah, nature is so perfect for the soul. Thank you, Lynette. And I'd like, I'd like you to continue to tell us what you're doing while I ask Gail my final question for the night, which is, Gail, um, I'd love for you to share with us the most impactful piece of wisdom that has been handed down to you and how it has actually made an impact, a positive impact on your life. Look, I think the most powerful impact on my life was, was my mother who didn't wrap me in cotton wool, you know, like she, when it was my turn to go to the shop, I had to go to the shop. I did the chores at night with with all the other kids. I was I was never wrapped in cotton wool and and um and she and my father believed that I could be anything I wanted to be, you know. And we lived in a small country town, so the pinnacle of achievement was um, for my father was that I would would become a secretary, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Such aspirations really for us girls well, back then. <laughs> it was really sweet, you know. And yeah, yeah. but my dream for myself was to work in in uh, in in the chemist shop <laughs> in wall chemist. Because it was like a, it was like a, um, you know, like a fairyland full of, you know, all these beautiful sparkly things, and it smelled lovely. And the girls always looked so glamorous Aww. in the farm. I believe they're all still working there. But that was my dream. When I grow up, I'm, I'm going to work in the chemist. But um, you know, like they, there, you know, like I think that the, the biggest piece of wisdom is really quite simple. Is my mother said to me you'll be right mm -hmm. and it was as simple as that you know and there was no great soliloquies or anything it was just you'll be right yeah. and and, and yeah. she was right you know and, and she yeah. she loved me enough to let me go you know and um i think that's um, um a really important thing for parents is to to be able to let go you know and uh, yeah. let their kids um, live their life. You know, I, I, I find um, the, the, the helicopter system of parenting now, I just yeah. wonder, you know, like a, everybody's expected to entertain their children all the time, you know. I, I mean, if any of us had ever told my mother that we were bored, you know, we'd be handed a hose and told to go and, you know, clean out the toilet, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, tell your parents. Yeah, you know? 
you yeah, got yeah. up in the morning with your breakfast and you and you just fucked off, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you came back for lunch and then you came back when the street lights went on, you know, like yeah. that was the way we grew up, you know. And um sure. so different and now. Most of us survived, you know. So Yeah. Well, I, I need you to know that I, all I aspired to do was to be a waitress at the Black Stump restaurant. That's all. Oh, I thought that was like the pinnacle of my life if I could be a waitress at the Black Stump. Oh, look, we, we used to go there. My friend Shirley and I used to go there and we'd, we'd get dressed up in, in gowns and go to the Black Stump. It was a place to It was so glamorous. I, you know, like... <laughs> And yeah. the waitresses were all really clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to be that girl. Don't you worry. Uh, Pauline, yeah, well, thank you for the forest. So that's really <laughs> nice for the soul too. Yeah. Hey, Gail, I know, I know I've only asked for one piece of wisdom tonight from you, but you did share another piece of wisdom with me before we came live, uh, which I would like you to share with everyone. Um, if everyone would like to know, we were talking about being girls and hormones and everything, and... Gail had an amazing piece of wisdom to share with me about menopause. Gail, would you like to share that with everybody, what your piece of well, wisdom is about menopause? Well, I, I just stayed drunk through the whole thing. And, <laughs> and uh, by the time I, I, I sobered up, it was all over. <laughs> So yeah, I was saying that my mum had menopause for twelve years. So that's a that's a long hangover, isn't it? <laughs> it is a long hangover, but it works. It works. I mean, in between, of course, you have to go to work and that. But you know, you you know, like a you know, there, there, there's you know, I, I thought there's I, I I had only one hot flush the whole time. You know, oh. so, you know, so I I may I run the whole time and didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't tell the difference between menopause or a hangover. You know, like it's probably really bad advice. But you know. oh, you're a classic. Well, look, thank you so much, Gail, for being on the Wine and Wisdom Show tonight. It has been wonderful to hear your wonderful take on the world. I mean, very wise take on the world for one, but also your your ability to flip. The, the 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 crappy stuff you know the racism and the prejudice that is so still instilled in our society that i mean i don't know what we need to do now to get it out but far out i i mean i just i just encourage you and other wonderful storytellers to tell their stories to talk out loud to share with us experiences because it's it's not until i mean even just this access whole thing i mean i it never even occurred to me gail so no, I, you know, I feel so stupid about that that i would not even have thought that that was such a big thing and but of course it is of course it is yes. um but it's only because you've shared that with me so please just if you continue to share then all of us can start to step up a bit and also <laughs> speak out and try to get the equality across so many areas of our society that we need better equality so yes yes definitely gail cheers to you yeah cheers <laughs> <laughs> cheers to everybody who's been listening uh we've loved your interaction tonight thank you so much uh, all of you i'm going to uh, oh what i want to do before we go in fact is this is oh, one yeah. of the amazing books uh, that you should definitely get your hands on. And I really recommend you quickly taking a screenshot of that picture so you can go wherever you need to go. Glee Books, I think you said, uh, Gail, sell yes, it. Online, Booktopia, any bookshop will order it in for you. But she has got 14 other ones as well. So you can just put in a name and they'll all come up. So <laughs> but please, um, this, have, have a read of this amazing book. And if you would like to, to know who are going to be the amazing guests coming up on the show, because there is always amazing guests on this show, as you can see tonight, uh, please uh, just contact me. Um, but in the meantime, Gail, thank you again. It's been amazing. Okay. Love Thank you, having you very much. Home. Thank you, everybody else. Have a great Wednesday night, and we will see you soon.